most comfortable cosplay I own. No, it's close. I really love this arm movement. <laughs> Hello there, Bembridge Scholars! Ha! It is finally our sacred season. It's Halloween time. For each year, I tend to slam a ton of videos into this month because YouTube and cosplay is very, very well researched during this month because everybody likes to make Halloween costumes this one time of year. So I always make a lot of content, which is great, and that's how a lot of people come to my channel. But it just feels like a hodgepodge to me and I don't really have a theme. But this year, I wanted to come it a bit differently. I chose one movie, then based four videos off of content from that one movie. And you might have guessed what I've chosen by obviously clicking on this video. <laughs> so welcome to the Mummy Month. And for this video, like you've clicked on, I created Eevee, a very, 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 very simple cosplay. In this video, I will be going over how I purchased, thrifted, altered the outfit and made some pieces, as well as how I did my wig and how I did my makeup. Everybody just loves Evie. This cosplay was honestly my first real closet cosplay. I don't really do a whole lot of closet cosplays because I'm just a person who makes everything. But I really honestly thought when I did the beginning of this that I could thrift Evie completely. Um, I kind of did. I tried my freaking hardest to find this blouse, um, thrifted, which is really difficult unless it's like a solid color or a solid pattern or something like that and you can easily find it. But trying to find this mainly white, somewhat striped blouse with the fit that I wanted was kind of- I searched thread up for weeks and so I just finally gave up and found the exact thing I needed on Amazon. <laughs> Fun fact about this shirt, it's actually a men's size uh, that's one size up. It's a men's shirt, button-up shirt. And also, when I was researching them this movie a bit more, I found out that Rachel Weisz is wearing a men's shirt. You can tell by the size of whichever the buttonholes are and the buttons are. Um, they're flipped for men and women's blouses and button-ups. The skirt was the first thing I found, and I did thrift that off of ThreadUp. It was honestly kind of like angel sung as I was scrolling down the khaki skirts in on ThreadUp. If you don't know what ThreadUp is, it is an online consignment store that is just wonderful. And that's where I tend to shop a lot for just mm, my wearable things and, you know, cosplay stuff. I buy a lot of my cosplay stuff from ThreadUp. Highly recommend. Not sponsored, but hey, ThreadUp, call me. Even though this blouse, uh, not the blouse, the skirt came the way it is, I did end up adding in belt loops, which you will see how to do in this video, uh, because Evie is wearing a belt with the skirt. Now the belt is mine, the shoes are also mine, tights are mine, those things I just had in my closet. The wig was something definitely I bought. Um, I weirdly did not have a medium brown to dark brown wig with bangs. And I know that's extremely specific, but when you're making stuff that's very curled and like stylized, you need that extra hair in the front area to get that certain historical look. The wig is from Wig Is Fashion, and I do show you how I style it here in the video. And last but not least, the glasses were purchased from Amazon because, and these are also readers, trying to find 2030s style tiny glasses, thrifted is kind of hard and kind of weird gross but I found these on Amazon once again all these Amazon links will be down below and also last but not least this scarf I ended up creating with extra scrap fabric that I had here that I will also show you in this video so Evie is half thrifted half purchased all in all a really simple simple cosplay to make I think everything was at least under a hundred dollars I know that um, so without further ado let's get into how I made this thing so the little neck scarf that I created is out of some black scrap fabric that is pretty much just cut into a diamond shape. Once I cut the diamond shape, I just serged the edges and ironed it flat. It was pretty simple. You need to be a little loose, so careful around the bulk around the neck. But I definitely recommend maybe like a crepe or a very, very, very light um, cotton. Uh, that will definitely work for the scarf freebie. After 
the scarf was done, I moved on to making belt loops. So for the belt loops, you'll want to find your exact measurement of the belt that you're going to put around your skirt, measure the width of that belt, and then create your belt loops by adding in about an inch on each side of those belt loops. These belt loops are one uh, half inch, no, just a half inch in width, I think maybe three quarters, not sure. I ended up making five belt loops. So I interfaced some very similar fabric that I have, and then I took it to the machine once the belt loop strips were cut, and then I folded under the edges on both sides to create the, the look of the belt loop. If you need some real reference, I would suggest taking a look at some jeans that maybe you have to see how these belt loops look, and then you'll kind of understand how they are attached to the pants. So the first thing you wanna do is to Fold under the sides to create a strip of the belt loop with two rows of top stitching on each side. Then I measured down a half an inch from the top part of the skirt made of mark, and that is where my first edge of the belt loop is going to go. Now I am moving in a little bit with the belt loop um, so I can stitch it, and there's some seam allowance there. As you can see here, I went ahead and just stitched it over across the half inch from the top of the skirt. Then I folded it over and left about a one eighth of an inch little overhang to top stitch that part down because you need that part to be nice and flat so your belts aren't you know moving around everywhere so once you have that piece top stitched then i took a ruler i measured two inches down from the top part of the belt uh the belt loop and that is where the next round of top stitching will be. So once I established where my mark was, I tucked under that part of the belt loop with the raw edge and then sewed directly over. Really simple. Belt loops are actually really kind of fun to make. They're nice and clean once you put them in. It's kind of nice. And they're really super easy. You just got to find the right fabric that matches with your outfit. Once the belt loops are made, I tried it with my belt. Looks like it fit perfect. Okay, now let's chat wig. This wig is purchased from Wiggis Fashion, the brand. The link is down below in the description if you would like to get this exact wig. But honestly, you could get any medium brown wig with bangs. The bangs are very important. Make sure you have bangs for uh, Evelyn's hair. Now, this style is very much um, organic, I guess you could say. <laughs> Basically what I did is that I sectioned off the bangs and then I sectioned off the front half of the wig into two separate pieces, I would say. And then the bulk of the wig in the back where the, um, the bun will go, basically. So right here, the first thing I'm actually doing, since I am using a synthetic wig, is that I am changing the part direction of the wig. Synthetic wigs react to steam. So if you have a synthetic wig and you need to change the part of the wig, um, go ahead and move the hair over, grab your steamer like I have here and get really close with that steam to those wig follicles. And that will end up moving the hair and kind of smoothing it down in the direction that you want it. Once I had the hair direction and where I needed to go, I grabbed some hairspray and a whole bunch of rollers and started sectioning off and rolling her hair. Now with very curly hair and your wig isn't that curly, you're gonna wanna start with a lot of small sections and just curl that thing like crazy. It's okay if you have like Shirley Temple curls once it's over. You want that bounce, you want that flow because that gives you the nice wavy look of a very natural curly headed style. So you can just kind of follow where I have the rollers here for making your own Eevee. But honestly, it's just rolling everything with the direction of the part that you have on the side. And I'm um, using the front edge of little bangs and little wispies that she has, also rolling them really nice and tight because that'll also blend that edge of the wig into your head. So for the next couple of minutes or seconds, I am just rolling hair like crazy.
Once you have the hair up in all the rollers known to man, grab your steamer again, and then we're going to steam the curls into place. Since this is a synthetic wig, it will react to steam. You can actually kind of watch the curls kind of tense up on the roller when you hit it with a steam, the steamer. Um, do this for a while. Um, hit it really good with steam to make those curls really stick. The, the ones that you have more hair on the roller are more likely not going to curl up the best. You want a little amount of hair and a medium amount of hair on the roller to get that curl to be nice and bouncy. But honestly, my set ended up working perfectly, so I was very proud of it, pretty happy with it. Um, and then once you're done steaming, let it sit overnight. You do not want to remove the curlers when they are wet, because then you will no longer have your set curls. So I honestly let mine set for about two evenings, and then the next day I took it out. And you can see it's actually pretty bouncy, pretty good, and that is because of the hairspray that I sprayed on, or you can also use some kind of gel, um, either one, and then also hitting it with the steam. So she became out really curly and it was quite perfect. Once all the rollers are out, I gave her a firm little brush through all of the curls and you go ahead and just really kind of brush it to town because once you brush more and more curls with your wig, the bigger and more voluminous the wig will get and the more volume and waves you'll have for this style, which is what you want. So like I said at the beginning, I do section off the hair into three parts, the right and left side sections and the back, which is most of the hair that will just become a bun. And then the front little tendrils bang sections get their own little section as well. Once I have the sections, I start rolling up the curls into kind of themselves and then spinning it like a bun. Basically, I pinned the crap out of this thing. And unfortunately, if you don't have a lot of really sturdy bobby pins, the curls do kind of fall out a bit. So put as many bobby pins and as many hair pins in it as you possibly can. Um, I suggest using pretty much the whole box because that's honestly how hairstyles were made back in the 20s and 30s is that they were curled to the Dickens and then they were put up with a ton of pins. So that's exactly how I did it here. Um, I'm also making focus at the, that there is a nice wave, kind of a finger, a finger wave to it. So when you're looking at it, you get lots of texture and different movement. And then leaving the tendrils out in the front, teasing them a little bit and spraying them down to make sure it covers the edge line of that hairline. After I finished putting the massive amount of bobby pins in it, I think it turned out pretty great. I will say I was kind of pushing bobby pins in the whole time during my shoot, but that's okay. I really liked the amount of curls and volume and just look that this wig have that this wig has. And the one thing you need to make sure you are doing if you want to get a really good Evie wig is to get those front bangs to lay in those curls and those little tendril curls to lay exactly where they are because she has very, very curly hair. But I think honestly it turned out pretty Great. It is now makeup time. So for Evie's makeup, um, there's one glaring, 
glaring thing um, that everybody picks on her about, including myself, but also it was the style of the 20s, and that is her oh so thin eyebrows. Now, when the movie was made, that was kind of the thing at the moment, you know. Um, I'm a 32 year old woman. I survived the 2000s with my eyebrows somewhat still intact. I plucked those things to next year. Like, I don't know why and who, and I still wanna have chats with, whoever decided to make that a trend. Cause like, why? The 2000s were honestly, <laughs> in my opinion, the worst fashion decade of all time. Alas, let's be, bring it back around and talk about Evie's makeup. So I, I'm not gonna pluck out my eyebrows, nor am I gonna shave my eyebrows. I have thinner eyebrows enough to where I think we could really make it work with just some brow mascara and a little good placement of brow pomade. So unlike some other Evie makeup tutorials here on the YouTube, I'm not removing my eyebrows. Her makeup is mostly just a very natural look um, for the 20s and 30s. It's very toned down. Um, so I'm pretty much just gonna do a very basic look and then um, go from there. Yeah, so first let's put our hair up and then move into the makeup. Basic foundation. Well, primer first. As you can see, they're very thin and they do have a large arch to them. Um, and that's pretty common for back in the day. I mean, Evie's outfit isn't too historically accurate if you wanna get on that, but more on that later. <laughs> um, and I feel like they just kind of really followed the time. Well, I mean, they just gave her really thin eyebrows. They probably did shave Rachel Weiss's eyebrows, probably. Poor girl. Anyways. I'm going to really rein myself in with the amount of brow pomade I put on and really just focus on a line instead of a fill and shape like today's doing and how we do it. But I am using just a basic pomade from the Anastasia brand and then a Maybelline brow sculpt. Let's see, let's see what we can do. I think I got it. Small line, small line, small line, small line. I think this is where we're gonna go with. I barely did anything. <laughs> nope, be careful, don't add too much. Although she has a very long brow, I might extend it. That and I, honest opinion, is like the glaring thing about the makeup for Evie is this, so I'm gonna put some brow mascara on to keep it Nice, a line, a bit of an arch. Nothing big, nothing big. All right, moving on to eyeshadow. I'm using Smoky Palette Brown. <laughs> Don't really need to be explaining brands on this one. Her, her eye, her makeup is very common. So, because she's a librarian, why not be a little, you know, I doubt she's been sporting green eyeshadow around. Don't think those Bembridge scholars would accept that. I don't think I'm gonna put any eyeliner on either. I think I'm just gonna put a heavy, heavy uh, mascara on and lashes because she doesn't have, in the photos and in the movie, she doesn't have eyeliner on either. And if it is, it's really subtle. So I'm trying to go pretty authentic here with her makeup. If I need it, I'll put more on, but I think, I think we're going, we're going good so far, so. Just 
realized I should have put the lashes on first before I did this. I don't know. Do you all put mascara on before you put lashes or do you put lashes on before mascara? Tell me in the comments below because this is a question I've always been curious about. Oh, for lipstick, I'm probably going to do this, my go-to brand, the Maybelline Superstay Matte Ink stuff in the little square bottle. If you guys haven't tried this stuff out yet, really should. Honestly, it's the best cosplay convention for all day wear um, lip matte lip gloss uh, kind of stuff. It's great. If you want to know, this is the Amazonian color. Alright, so, so the makeup is done. Um, wig and outfit. Then photo shoot. Here we go. Are you sure you want to be playing around with this thing? It's just a book. No harm ever came from reading a book. hope you all enjoyed that. I'm so happy that I ended up buying and thrifting this outfit. It was such a palette cleanser after the big builds of Nadja and Yennefer. I needed, I needed something that I could just throw on a mannequin and look at and make some small stuff and make it look really good. So <laughs> Evie was perfect. I've always wanted to be Evie. She is seriously one of my favorite film characters in one of my favorite movies of all time. I hope you all enjoyed this build video. But now let's talk about what the other videos I have planned for the month. Next week's video will be a prop build video on the Book of the Dead from scratch made entirely of foam. I wanted to have it done for this video, but I didn't quite get it done. 2020 y'all. <laughs> but that's okay. I've got the foam cut and it is looking so cool now. I can't wait to show you guys how I built this thing and also show you pictures of it along with this outfit again. So you'll be seeing this outfit quite often. Now the video after that will be an SFX makeup video. I love doing SFX makeup videos for Halloween. It's one of my favorite side hobbies besides sewing to do. And I will be doing an exact mummy look to be exact this one right here that Arnold Vosloo Himotep himself wears when I think he sucks the life out of the second person? Third, second, third? I need to rewatch it again. But I thought this look was gonna be a really fun one to try to recreate. That one will be a fun busy day because I tend to make the makeups and shoot it all in one day. And whew, that's gonna be fun. Alex and I will have a good time with that one. Okay, so the last video of this series is something I've been wanting to do for so long. I've just been waiting for the right time to start doing it and to make it a series. I kind of dropped this hint in my Yennefer video I did a while back about how I wanted to start doing some costume and film commentary. And a lot of you picked up on it, which I was really excited about, so thanks. But alas, my idea is that I want to do film and costume critique and commentaries and reacting videos while dressed as a character from that video to show you guys. So basically, I love movies. I love to critique them, I love to watch them, and I love to dive and research and find weird fun facts about movies. And I've been wanting to do a film critique series on my channel for so long, but I couldn't figure out how to warm it down to where I think you guys would really dig it. But I have an idea now, making the costumes from the film 
then watching and reacting in the costume, and then showing you guys, of course, the tutorials how I made the costume. So, at the end of the month, we are going to watch The Mummy while I'm dressed as Evie, and I will react, commentate, and critique the costumes and the film with you guys here on YouTube. However, I know most of you are saying this, we're not gonna be watching the full video because copyrights and monetization. Um, but it will be like a super cut highlight of me watching the movie with you guys. So it will definitely be edited down, hopefully not be flagged by YouTube, but we'll see. I wanna get it off the ground, so we'll see. So that is the timeline of the next month. I hope you guys are ready, cause me and my editing butt, so ready. <laughs> To wrap it up, thank you for clicking this video and watching it all the way to the end of my very simple Eevee build. If you end up making Eevee yourself for Halloween or for a convention, please tag me on your social media. I really wanna see your take on it. If you like cosplay, sewing, and Halloween videos, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. I post videos containing that content pretty much every week. And I will see you all next week. Bye. Ciao, Bembridge Scholars!